back to that. Okay. All right. I think we're all together now. Should be at least. Anyway, Rob, good to see you. Hey, Paris. Good to see you again. Yeah, I see. I see you're you're right where I left you in your living room, and uh, yeah. and I'm in yeah, I'm yeah. in a different setting now. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm back in the living room. Yeah. So um so sadly I have to break the news to you that you know you're you're not today's special guest. You're you're almost like a host <laughs> like me. Today's special yeah. guest is that. Oops, let me go over here. <laughs> so that's what we're here to talk about. It's what we're here to look around. So um yeah, let's get started. Uh you know, everyone, thank you for joining us. Um today uh we have the Elva here. Um, that we're going to be able to kind of show you up close and intimately uh, details on the car in full size, um, which is which is awesome. It's not functional. I can't mm -hmm. start it. Can't turn the headlights on. But everything else is uh, is is here. So, um, uh, like always, uh, if you oh, actually, the first question is you guys are upside down. Uh, that's from Dino. Dino, uh, you're probably on Firefox. We found out last time that if you're on a Firefox browser. Um, uh, it, 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 for some reason, inverts the cameras. It's the only one that does it. If you can get on Chrome or Safari, for the people that still use Internet Explorer, you know, it, 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 it should work. So give, give that a try. Um, for everyone else, just like usual, bottom right-hand corner. Oh, there we go. No, well, you're welcome. Uh, uh, the bottom right-hand corner is where the questions go in. Just load that box up, and, uh, and, and as we kind of, you know, go through things here, um, I'll just ask your questions and we'll just work our way around the car and and mm -hmm. uh, and let Rob tell us all about it. So um, so yeah, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll kind of kick things off. Actually, I'll ask the cool. first question. Rob, cool. where do you want me to start? Where do you where do you think <laughs> you know we start at the front, the back? You know, I think yeah, you know, I re I reckon start with the position of the car. Like where does it fit in in the big picture okay. of McLaren and yeah. All right. So if it's, I guess I've asked myself my own question there. Um, I think the, the key with this car is uh, within the Ultimate Series, we had the P1, which was the technology showcase. Then we came with the, the Senna, which was all about the, the Ultimate Road Legal track car. And then we came with the opposite end of the spectrum to that, which was the Speedtail, all about supreme luxury, GT cruising, long distances, um, ultra low drag. That was its mission. And then this one that finishes the quartet, essentially, was about engagement and this was another design pillar um key design pillar so this was all about engagement so wind in the hair wind in the face obviously we have some trickery which uh, minimizes that but it's all about that, that open cockpit experience ultra lightweight um and just putting the biggest smile on your face that you could it was really accessible fun on the road and um i think you know it's almost going back to the bygone eras that romantic era like this even from the you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, when cars, well, there were simply more cars like this. Just put a huge smile on your face. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, it really, you know, we were discussing it because, like I said, I've, I've, I've had the, uh, the pleasure of being with the car for, you know, the past two days. Um, so this is the third day. And, you know, I, I feel like I almost got kind of like a day in the life of you, you know, kind of like sitting with something <laughs> and just really like, mm -hmm looking at, I mean, imagine this is how it is when there's like a, you know, a, a clay model and yeah. things like that, where you really just kind of like study it. Um, and, and it's fascinating, all the solutions, you know, like you stare at something long enough and, uh, and, and you, you sit to wonder, well, why is this here? Why is that there? You know? So, um, oh, it's, uh, you know, we just came up with a solution here. We're going to, there you go. Cool. That's okay. so interesting what you're saying there, Paris, because really, all our cars, like I always, and I use this sort of, I guess, term or example quite often now, which is imagine there's an invisible jigsaw puzzle, and that invisible jigsaw puzzle is the airflow, and we have to guide the air around through the car over the occupants in this case, um, in the really elegant, beautiful way. But the body essentially is like um, the negative mold of what the airflow is doing, yeah. and it's trying to solve and put this jigsaw together. Um, in a really, I could say, a well-designed, well-thought-out way that delivers on the mission of the vehicle. And, um, you know, when we're doing the clay model, that comes after we've done all the sketching. And I think the, the clever bit, which the design team does, um, is, is working out this invisible jigsaw and creating sketches, which in our mind's eye work. 
and we kind of pull all these different elements and attributes together and putting these different pieces of jigsaw together and and we have a sketch off essentially where you know there might be five six seven designers sketching on this and i i normally rock in with a few doodles at the start and say this is like the mission the design brief these are the principles of it um which i can go into as well actually then they'll sketch maybe for about four weeks to six weeks for really intensive sketching literally wallpaper a room with like a3 sketches and um we narrow it down pick the best ones going to scale clay models and then eventually the winner from that goes to full size and um one of the one of the missions on here was to blur boundaries i.e the inside out thing where the body the, the volume of the car is one there's like no boundary between the interior and the exterior and you only see that when you walk up to the car and you peer inside the body yeah, just flows yeah, right that. in we're going to do that right now so you can see there on the doors on the inside of the doors where the body color literally rolls in the airbag cover on the passenger side normally that would be trimmed in leather or alcantara on on any car and here it's um, just a hard surface so a lot of engineering a lot of uh, trickery to to work through these problems and deliver something which is essentially yeah. seamless so blurred boundaries seamless um technical sculpture and you can see there because it is a design model um it's essentially what we would use to sign off the designs in-house um so highly detailed but highly delicate as um paris would tell you <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah i was, was going to say i'm trying to find the right it's funny with this uh this ipad trying to find the right angle but it is it is wild to see how much the paint you know how it really does follow onto the inside of the car and, we, um, and we've been able to do that through using if i, I I'll, I'll carry on yapping you tell me to show no 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 go for it, um, we, we've been we've been able to achieve that really seamless look this these huge volumes that just flow one into the other like incredible amount of sculpture because we're using ginormous single carbon panels so the front end there is just one single panel like the front yeah. clamp yeah, so from the nose all the way the, yeah that's right right down to the nose yeah so that's the front clamp from the edge of the front door all the way down to the nose we've got the the dashboard panel or the ip as we would call it the doors and then the rear clamp and the tonneau cover that's it what does ip car. stand for oh i don't know that's i think it's a german phrase i don't know it's one of those ways i would just call it, i would just call it I can panel. <laughs> yeah i get yeah i don't know but i call it so what i would call it in house is uh Mark mclaren we would call it the um upper dashboard upper then you have the lower when it was yeah. strangely enough when i was at um jaguar land rover and gm they called it an ip so yeah okay well but we'll continue calling it that yeah um okay <laughs> the questions are filling up so it's time for me to do my job um because normally okay. i'd call ip uh, instrument pack but yeah oh, okay there we go yeah, instrument pack there we go um okay ah okay this is a good one i would how does the airflow handle but coming towards the driver and how about pebbles thrown up by a car in front <laughs> who, uh, so I, I also guess... want to know who was the guy that that, that had to uh test that out was it Kenny did Kenny have yeah, to say, you guys just gonna throw team. stuff at the car <laughs> you know I always throw stuff at Kenny anyway um, <laughs> so like nah, it's, it's a good question and you know I think whenever you drive in a an open top car right first of all even without an active air management system you go out in an open top car, whether it's a Morgan, a Caterham, a like Lotuses of the past, etc. Even some of the modern competition to this as well, from other brands, you you cannot stop the stones and bugs coming into your face, not not at high speeds. But what we've created here is once you get up to around 30 miles an hour and the active air management system kicks in, basically we increase the window of which no pun intended window but we increase the um the speed of the airflow coming over you in this bubble which really means up until then around 70 miles an hour you, you're not gonna have guys please be quiet you're not gonna have um <laughs> you're not gonna sorry the children are no you. no worries you're, you're not gonna have um any bugs hitting you essentially now if a big stone comes you, you can't stop that yeah, you can't chase, you, change you, physics. Yeah, you, can, <laughs> you can't change physics. But what I guess what I'm saying is, if you look at the competition in the modern sense, and you look at the competition in a 
historical sense, there's nothing that you could drive like this with these speeds with as much comfort. So it's the best, most intelligent solution for an open top car you can get is the context. When you put it in re as a point of reference to everything else, it's the best version of what it can be. Yeah. It, and, you know, we know that this car was um, uh, heavily influenced by obviously the Alva race car where it gets its name. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, how much of the original race car influence did you did you try and incorporate in? I mean, because, you know, you're, you know, a race car, which was held to a governing body, you know, of a sport in the, mm -hmm. you know, 60s and 70s versus a DOT, you know, street compliant. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, how much of it were you able to retain and how much of a challenge was it? So I'm going to, I don't know if anyone from PR is going to tell me off now, phone me as I tell, tell a story, but the, um, the, the truth. The, the actual series of events on this car was um, we had the blurred boundaries, the seamless, this technical sculpture where like, in the Formula One type surface language, which is being introduced here. So really taking 720 and, and pushing it on into the future. And this is the starts of like our next sort of surface language form. You see these fuselage Formula One type side pods. If you go around to the body side, you can see the way the line runs around from the nose comes through to the door and then kicks down towards the rear, just like the F1 side pods. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah, if you angle that down, yeah. And as you come along to the side now, just angle the camera along the side. Oops. Just, yeah, along the door, that's it. And you can see it comes along and then drops down, aiming towards the middle of the rear wheel, just like a Formula 1 side pod. Now, we were doing this, we were working on this roadster, and as we were working through it, a few people said, well, look, you know, there's a really strong resemblance to the M1A. Um, being the 1964 car and obviously we're trying to push the nose down as low as we can and it just felt like a really nice sort of fit and story and of course the M1A had the shoulder type intakes just behind the uh, trailing edge of the the doors and um, and that was a bold feature on here so it was it was a it was a nice visual link even though it didn't start out as copy that car or vice versa so there's a there's a nice link there it's not literally um, inspired and copied from it, but the um, I think the spirit lives on in this car really does. And I think, I mean, that actually, I'm just going to stop talking for a second just to come and chat about the front corner there. I think that is such a fantastic view, especially in this uh, Morello red. Is you the, the expression on this car when you see it in the flesh, it, it looks so low, so aggressive and mean, but but it has this like level of sophistication to it, it's not. And the volumes that build up the car through the front fenders, those side doors, or I should say the body side. Like, like honestly, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the Alpha 33 Stradale, and this has more shape than the Stradale. It, oh, it's yeah. It's absolutely insane. But you just have to look at the body side from the rear. If you and I'm get you to do a workout We're now, going Paris, to the rear. But if you, yep. <laughs> as you I'm walk around. My way to there. The, <laughs> You see there the hammerhead line that flows around into that sort of McLaren tick on the front end, and then that flows into the body side. And as you move down the body side now, and you look into the back of the front wheel. Let me go over here. If you have a look now into the back of the front wheel. Yep. That's the angle, angle it towards the front wheel. There you go. And you can just see how deeply sculpted that body side section is. Now, that that Formula One inspired line, which runs from the top of the front wheel and kicks down in the body side towards the rear wheel, that that is effectively a duct on the inside of the door that, that takes air down to the middle of the radiator, which is mounted behind the panel nearest to the camera. The top intake, which is exposed, feeds the top part of the radiator. And then the sill, that huge sill, the light catcher on the bottom of the body side, um, that is also a duct as well. So you've got this really intricate hidden ducting system, which feeds the radiators, but keeps the body incredibly elegant. But at the same time, we shrink wrap around it and it shows off this like really, really beautiful musculature and um, the, these volumes, which are absolutely unique to this car. No other car has these volumes that run through and kick down like Formula One car. It's incredibly distinctive. And then, um, Sorry, you're about to ask a question. I think I heard an intake of breath. Nope, go for it. 
I'm ready. <laughs> Whatever you want to say. The, I think if you, if you keep moving around to the rear, then because someone everyone's got like kind of a good view, good feel for the overall car. Yeah. So on the rear corner there, we have um, like the side cheeks. There you go. Just there you go. Just on the outside of the body. These these um, we call them side cheeks, but these like floating blades which hang off from the main fuselage of the body, exposing all the back of the tires. That means all the high pressure air that builds up in the uh, wheel arches can come straight out of the back. So again, it's, su it's really optimizing this invisible jigsaw, the aerodynamic, the aerodynamics of the car. Um, no, I mean, it looks fantastic as well, but it's there for a reason. And then the, the sharp trailing edge of that blade helps us detach the air in the rear corner. And then you get a dose of, um, let's say, a McLaren, uh, the P1 GTR, the way the body color comes around, flows in off that main fuselage and drops down on the inside. So if you go to that dead rear view again, Paris for us, that's great. That's that's superb. So the we've got the the outdoor, the outboard blade, and then inside of that we have the the one that sweeps down like the P1 GTR. So this looks fantastic in dark colors like this. So you can go for like you know the whites, the pearls, um, the velocities. We we were looking at some specs yesterday at work um, for that for our um, pre-production cars, and uh, we've got some in pure white, white interiors, white exteriors. They look absolutely insane. We've got um, like the reds going through into um, a satin uh, visual carbon fibers, which again look absolutely incredible. Then you have the um, these almond-shaped LED light blades across the rear, incredibly slim. But when they illuminate, they look they just look so yeah. so good. I'd, I'd, it just really homogenous lighting, so very consistent, ultra futuristic. Then you've got the laser cut mesh. This is again just a model, but you have a laser cut mesh running full width across the back, so it's really nice and seamless. Looks ultra slick. Then you have the the exhaust system, which is really quite interesting on this car because, as you can see, again it's a design model, so it's, it doesn't run through, but it's very. It, this is 99% accurate to the uh, the car. So you've got a quad exhaust system, two on the rear, um, which really add a lot of bass and um, like it help the sound bounces off the road, literally. So it adds a really deep throaty noise to the whole system. Then you've got the two top exits again, which add have the higher frequencies. And just to, together, you get this really full sound. And um, obviously, you will get a few flames out there as well, which um, adds to the drama. Um, then, of course, you have this uh, sort of double element rear diffuser, incredibly aggressive. And then the, the, the fences that drop down, so from those outboard cheeks to the body core that drops in and then to the fences on the diffuser, so like just packed full of aggression, um, which I love. And, and again, obviously on the real car, you can see into all, all the technical detail behind the mesh, just like on the P1 GTR. So it looks, it does look insane. The, the prototypes, and validation prototypes for production now, just look absolutely fantastic. Just, it is mind blowing. We've had, we have audiences traveling into work to look at the car because it is literally, and I, I would say this because I was kind of a designer, but it looks absolutely incredible. Yeah. And I mean, that's a great shot. You can just see these huge Very volumes good. all flowing seamlessly into, into each other. The full width um, active rear wing and air brake there. Um, and then ahead of that, you have those two intakes for the air boxes on the buttresses. And in the middle of the car, down the center line, you have um, like a heat management panel with a laser cut mesh in there as well. Um, if we walk, if you go yep. walk along now and start to have a look to, towards the interior, yep. there's a panel that runs over the buttresses there. And that panel here, here there you go, you're looking at it now, the tonneau cover. When you open that, and you can't do that on this model because it's a design model, but when you open that on the real tried. prototypes, <laughs> you tried already. Okay. Yeah. Not too hard, I hope. Um, no. In there, you've got storage. You can put helmets in, etc. So it's um, just a nice, slick way of um, integrating luggage you may need to carry carry with you. And this is a B two B car, really. Um, you're not going to be driving away for days and days in this thing. It's definitely about the fun. Get out on the road, whiz around, and come back home. Um, and ahead of that, you've got the um, rollover protection system. So on the very front top of the buttresses there yeah very nice simple clean execution they deploy um, this meant we could keep this really sleek silhouette to the car obviously there is a system it adds a little bit of extra weight which when we're trying to keep the weight down was a challenge but we we felt that was worth it 
um, to deliver the overall like looks of the car. And here, that's a great, a great shot that really shows the sort of bathtub type feel. And you feel incredibly cocooned when you're sat in the car. And um, obviously, I've been lucky enough to go out in it. And um, when you when you first sit in it, you feel absolutely sunk down. We we pick the belt line up, and it tucks up around your shoulders, so you feel really safe and secure. Um, then we have the binnacle, so the instrument pack, which is this like pebble on the, um, which is column mounted. Yeah, so you see here, if you look on the steering wheel and the instrument pack, so it's almost like a pebble that's mounted on the column. So as you adjust the steering wheel, the, um, the, the binnacle stays with the steering wheel. They move together, which means you always have perfect ergonomics, perfect visibility of the, the instruments. Um, and also up there, you can see these two paddles. You see this yes. grey paddle on the, yeah. So you've got those for powertrain and for handling, which means you don't know. You no longer have to look down in the centre tunnel like on on the original McLarens, where you could change the modes. Now you keep your eyes on the road, keep the smile on your face, keep you know keep driving, keep your foot down, keep engaged, and you can cycle through the modes and and, and play with it because essentially this is all about fun. So. It, super immersive we've got a fantastic screen there ultra clear incredibly responsive and we've got the most powerful processor on the market in any car so it's really responsive super easy to use now um you can see on the uh, the vents there actually if you pop back in sorry paris yep. you squat up and down there right so you there. see the um the door vents now the yes. door vent is in in the flesh this will be a machine from solid component and we've got the vents integrated but that 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 machine from solid piece here is also the door handle so this is where when ah. you sat in the car in the real thing you put your hand down the back there and you close it using the back of that machine component so it's on i call mclarens we always try and have dual triple function to everything this means we can take weight out of the car um, no excess everything's authentic there's no it's not just styling because just because it, it has to be styled to look great but it also has to work incredibly well and save weight and, and have dual triple functionality, just like a Formula One car. The same in the center there, you've got storage under the armrest, um, got the air vents in the center there as well. Uh, the seats, um, carbon shell seats, ultra lightweight, some inbuilt ventilation across the shoulders. Sound system, which is, um, is really immersive, wraps around you, around the head there. Um, so again, uh, the sound system actually really, really did surprise me just how well it works. We, without getting too technical, the, the Zenith, the way we aim the sound to the ear, um, has been really carefully crafted so that even in higher, was, was at higher speeds, it sounds superb. Um, I went out on a sound test actually in Spain to do that. And I think it's just. It's a car which makes you smile. But you know what? The one thing we haven't mentioned yet, and in many ways, one of the stars of the show technically, is the active air management system. And when I went out in the car that first time, and I was with the chief engineer on the project, so I'm sat there ready to take take some notes on the sound. And we had our sunglasses on because, as the first question alluded to, you, you can't stop physics. But even with the active air management system on at this point, I was like, wow, this is so calm. He goes going quicker and quicker, 80, 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. And at this point, he's going steady, 80. And so I put my hand up and he goes, right, just try sliding your hand up. So I slid the hand just above my head. And you can feel like, poof, like the turbulent. It's absolutely It's like escaping bonkers. a bubble, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's insane. And, and what's more is when I did it again, you can actually feel the calm air. Then it goes to the turbulent air, which we call the boundary layer. Then above the boundary layer, you had the free stream air, and uh, you could literally feel the different segments of airflow, and um, which was fantastic because I've read so much about it over the years, obviously. But to be able to feel right. the difference was was incredible. Yeah, I was right, just so great from here own... to here. <laughs> no, go on, so you my go own it. curious question from staring at this thing, we were all taking bets as to what that panel is right there. Uh, the reservoir access panel so yeah that's and that's what i thought it was i thought it was an access yeah. panel some people power, thought it power was like steering a, some people yeah. thought it would pop up and have a uh, uh you know a mirror in it or something but I, I i was pretty sure it was an access panel so yeah yeah it's for fluids for the um, power steering yeah all right so 
Um, lots of questions here. Um, Actually, I'm just going to read the whole thing. I have my thumb over it. Um, it says, I was fascinated to learn that the four exhaust pipes were tuned so that two have one pitch and the other two have a different pitch. So the exhaust note actually is a chord. Uh, why was that done? And how did McLaren decide on the sound they wanted? Okay. So you're absolutely right. It was done to together to create a full, well-rounded sound um, or a chord, as you say. I'm no musician, but um, so why did we do it? Well, I think in the past we've been, I remember what, with the 12C, essentially, it was like, it needs more passion. As we're developing the cars, we, we really hit the nail on the head with the 675 LT. That is when we really seem to put the passion into the cars, obviously with P1 as well, but that was hyper, hyper car. But we really seem to, click with something then we, we realize with the cars you have to have emotion with them they have to sound fantastic look fantastic drive fantastic you buy a supercar because you want it and and it has to it has to really play on the senses so that's the why now how we decided on the sound i've got to say i don't know because um we have literally a team of sound engineers and they they go through they review what other car makers are doing they they, they describe what they want to hear and um i guess they present a range of sounds one is this is how the engine is naturally untouched then they tune it they tune the pipe shapes the pitch angles the length of pipe and eventually and it takes them probably probably longer than what i think but i say at least a couple of years of development to really fine tune it and um their hands are tied initially because you haven't got the correct engine yet so the last six months for them is incredibly busy or last year for them is incredibly busy um but it does sound amazing and again this is actually i'm glad you mentioned that because that's one of the reasons why we've had these groups of people going into work probably when they shouldn't have done to uh, hear the first cars being built and, and how it sounds because the news is it sounds absolutely fantastic that's great um let me see here um what was uh what was the biggest, what was the largest engineering challenge with this car? Um, oh, I think all um, of it. <laughs> it's one it big all, engineering challenge. It is, it is. And I, and I suppose, and I know I've already mentioned this, but I think I'm probably right to mention it again, was the active air management system. So this feature you see in the middle of the hood, or the middle mm -hmm. of the front. And um, the way we take air in under the nose, and we fire it out this rectangular slot. We take it under the nose and it gets fired out and over the occupants. So it, it was an incredibly, it was a really, really tough challenge because we were wrestling with aero and with engineering on the width. They wanted it really, really wide. And we were like, well, if you go really wide, you can't get the air down the sides into the, the door intakes and to the front door intake. This is a great view for showing it. So we have the front fenders which come down. And we have create these channels to guide the air in to those intakes on the very front part of the door on the top. Um, but obviously, as they're trying to drive the active air management system wider, it was pushing those feature lines out. We couldn't get enough air in to cool the high temperature radiators. So in the end, we were talking about different ideas and we, we came up with this gurney flick that, that fires up to help deflect the air over further. That was a massive, massive um, step forward for us. And then, of course, we were able to come up with the idea of just fluting the fences within that, that rectangular um, slot on the front there. And by, by angling them out, it was enough to fire the, um, or create the air bubble and, and, and make it wide enough that you don't feel any buffeting on the side of the head as well. And that, that's something which has taken years to tune. An immense amount of work for what sounds quite a simple idea, but it's not, it's really not. And then, you know, uh, for, for some of the people that actually don't know, um, where did the Elva get its name? Ah, so Elva, um, it mean, I think it means go fast. I think it means go faster. Ele Eleva is how you say it. So literally E-L-L-E-V-A, I think, is the, is the correct terminology. And so that's where it came from, the meaning of like go faster, go quicker. And the first car, the M1A, which was 1964, was and then we had an M1B and an M1C. That's where it came from. And Elva was a coach builder who 
I think was building. So we bought the designs from McLaren and then built the first first couple of them. I think two or three of them. And that was it. Just wanted to get there was an doors, Elvis though. car as well. There's a gold Elvis version. I um, yes yes there is. I was actually I'm yeah. gonna I'm actually gonna show it here in a second. I've got it. I've got it actually up on the screen. So. Yeah, actually, while we're on the topic of the name and all that, let's see if I can get this uh, queued up properly. Bring it over to the screen here. So, that is the Elvis one. Yeah, and I mean, on my screen, it's quite hard to see the... The white stripe? The, the white graphics and, yeah. Let's see. But, um, yeah. Going, going, yeah, if you, you kind of see. Do you have the original Elvis car? So we've been we've been working on the livery for this, and um, oh yeah, I can see it through the front now. That's working. Yes. Well, and, that's um, That's cool. Very cool. Yeah, we, yeah. Did grab, we grabbed that clip from Spin Out and actually here to go to the next. Uh, so, yeah, you can't see all the details. And uh, and actually, you know what I'm going to do? Um, this wasn't part of the plan, but uh, everyone that's actually joined us on here, we're actually going to email you um, uh, basically all the uh, all different liveries that we put together. And actually, Rob, I'm going to go through a couple of them right now just so you can yeah. see. I want to I want to show off something I did. <laughs> Try and impress you. So this ah, is an cool. special. Yeah, yeah, like it. That's cool. Have you done these yourself? No, hell no. I'm just you know I'm joking. told somebody to do yes. it. but this is weird. But I went through. I went through and found it. Like so, this is the one that was driven by Maston Gregory. I tried to find all the significant ones. I mean, believe it. I mean, there was a lot of Elvas that actually competed. You know, and and the different ones, the M1A, the M1B. So I really tried to find the ones that were you know the most significant. Um, this one again, not the most interesting cool. livery, but Carol Shelby. You know, I thought that yeah, was really interesting cool. that he campaigned yeah. one. So, and then we've that's got cool, obviously yeah. the famous ones. So yeah. the yeah, M6A kind of car. Inspired. So we've got yeah. the uh, the white number roundel with the four for, yeah. for Bruce, and then we've got the number five that Denny drove. I think I think this is great what you've done because you can. Um, I actually I didn't I had no idea you're going to show those, but I think it's. Um, you can have a lot of fun with this car. Like you think even down to the helmets, the liveries, uh, that's, we were, the we were personalization. Just about that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, it's about, it's just about fun. And we were, I guess the reason for the active air management was to, how can you have fun more safely than anyone else? And we had to bring that McLaren technology, that thinking, a different way of looking at it and breaking down the problem uh, to the car. And we've, I think we've really done that. But this thing is, um, yeah, I think it looks great in any color as well. And we've it really tried some does. crazy colors. Yeah, it does, right? It just it, works. It's actually hard it's to a good decide sign. which one. It's hard to decide what color you would do. Because it can look you go so for? sinister. Huh? What would you go for? Oh, man. Come on. You know, it, it, it's it's funny. So I, I always do silver cars. Like whenever I get the chance, mm -hmm. it's some shade of silver or gray. Um, but I think, you know, we, we talked, uh, you know, briefly about how... Um, how this is this is a car that that there are you know there's the Monza there's the the Aston Roadster, but I think this one really nailed it in terms of of like design and it really does it can pull off these liveries. I mean we've seen retro liveries on everything Martini Golf we've mm -hmm. seen it on every type of car you know, but it it looks really at home you know on this yeah. car like it doesn't look you know so. 
honestly, I, I think I'd have to, I'd have to do the Elvis car. I just love the story. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Elvis. it's one of the few cars I'd ever own in gold. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, it sounds, yeah. sounds ridiculous, but um, I've actually been fortunate enough to see the, um, the actual real car, which they call, you know, Colorado gold, you know, cause it lives in Colorado yeah. now. Um, and I, I saw it at a concourse a while back. And I always thought it was weird because um, I had no idea why it had both Graham Hill's name on it and Elvis Presley. And I remember like not doing a ton of research, but it was like, you know, because there's a lot of celebrities that get into cars and go racing. And um, I thought, OK, did Elvis actually because my mom was a huge Elvis fan. And I was like, did Elvis actually like have a go, especially with Graham Hill as a teammate? And it turns mm -hmm. out the owner was like, no, nope, I just wanted to put the two most notable people that have gotten behind the wheel of the car. Yeah, so, that's cool. Um, so yeah. yeah, and also like I said, it's not it just, it's not in the movie, but in this car, the the original car has. Oh, Got to reverse it here, but there's there's this really cool McLaren script on the nose. It's it's like this yeah. again when I email it, but just it just looks yeah. it just looks so yeah. good. So um, that's cool. That that I guess that's what I what I would do, but it is one of those things where I, I want to you want to collect them all. You know, they're like matchbox <laughs> yeah. cars. That's like, you know? Expensive hobby, yeah. Um, but yeah, but but it's funny, you know. After spending time with the car, it made me think a great deal about your spec. Remember, we talked about the car that faded. Didn't it go from like silver to black? Yeah, that's right. It was um, like yeah. um, the mission would have been like satin visible carbon through yeah. to then a silver, a satin silver. That's what it was. That's what um, it was. yeah. Because yeah. because I guess when when we a reason I did that was when we we're doing the color materials for this car. I had this the logic of because this car's basically built on volumes, the theme is volumes, just like all the old classics, just big sweeping volumes. And I was like, well, if you took a pebble, it's getting a bit artistic now, but if you take a pebble and you paint it, one in, in let's say, a white gloss and the other one in black satin, it's the same geometry, but you change the feeling about the car or the the, the object completely. So when we launched the Elva, my the original vision was have um, I think it was da, 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 black gloss and iMac silver, like a, a satin silver. And the, and the and the idea was born from Chanel, because like a designer she always said, you know, black and white, the two simplest colors. Just let the volume, let the lines, let the silhouette be the hero. And that was the mission behind these two, and that's why we ended up with timeless. And we ended up with Explore as the two main concepts behind the whole color and materials, like the visual look and feel of the car. And um, we've really captured that. This one is clearly a timeless, very glossy, this deep Merlot red. Um, just incredible. It shows off the depth incredibly well, especially when it's outside in the sunlight. And then the show car that we showed at the um, Winter Ball was a, a blue, satin blue. And it just shows off the volume. So this shows off all the highlights. Um, but the, the satin blue one shows off the volume. And that's why this these two different approaches. Um, yeah, a very purist of me. But um, yeah, it, the car works in both. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, now I guess I got to do my job. Let's see your questions. There's plenty of them. Okay. Um, uh, oh, this one's actually just a compliment. I, pre I appreciate how much you guys uh, are, are enjoying this. Um, it says, uh, it says, can you send? Them? Yes, I will send that link um uh over so you guys have it um and actually there's a bunch of questions i missed let me scroll up here um you know this was a lot easier when we were in my living you know i was in my living room i'm sat there i'm not wearing any pants i've got to wear pants like this is a it's completely completely different here um i won't stand yeah, up know, then. so favorite so favorite line on the car um what would what would you say is your favorite line oh you know Ah, favorite line. That's who's asked that awkward question. That's a good question. Um, like I, I've kind of alluded to it already. So first of all, I love the volume of the car. The volumes. You, you, how often do you ever get to do volumes like this? As, you know, as a car designer, this is like the dream car. There's nothing else like it now. My favorite lines. Ah, I love, love, love the when you look from the high front view. If you go to the high front view. Like, right, if you stand right at the center of the car, right in the center of the car, looking down at the nose. Center. Yeah, sorry, I'm being really finicky. No, 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 it's okay. It's, it's, um, you know, 
this yeah. iPad camera. Because if I it's flip this, it over to the other side, there we go. This kind of view, and it's quite hard to see, but I love the way the fenders sweep down to so those, so those big volumes, but then the lines that run either side of this rectangular outlet in the middle, and they flow around into the front intakes on the doors. You have to go a bit closer. Paris, almost if you like walk um, now towards the car. If you start walking towards the car, like just above the um, the headlamp, just in board of the headlamp, and walking near, and as you keep the camera a little bit higher, you can see there's a line on the in, on the on the hood that flows along into the door. So you see the line on the hood that's flowing into the door, um, and it hooks around. So you can see the intake on the front of the door there, Paris. If you go up there behind the wing mirror, or door behind mirror. the wing mirror, yeah, right over here behind the door mirror. That's it. So yeah, you look down now. If you go over and hang the camera over the car, yeah, th these lines that flow around and blend back into the volumes um, if you, on the very front of the door. There you go. Yeah, the, it's quite hard. Well, if you go high, you need to go high up, high up high with up. the camera. Yeah, looking down though. High camera position, but looking down. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, one second. <laughs> I'll, I'll... Sorry. It's All tricky right. doing it. Yeah. yeah. But I think these lines lines that flow in and the reason i pick out those lines because i could easily pick the hammerhead line around the nose that flows into the body side line that would be that's the one i would normally call out because it's so distinctive but i just love there's moments on this car where you could take them as like a periscope shot as like a isolated view and every single inch is is beautiful um so yeah that, that high front view is my favorite view of the car though because i just love the big sweeping fenders and it kind of has that feeling of like where, where a muscle like the shoulder and the biceps intersect it feels really muscular so a long very long answer to a simple question <laughs> whoops i've lost sound a little bit there paris so oh, it's because i'm covering it yeah, you go. it's back man these ipads for as great as they are they're really not meant to be doing stuff like this um uh so with this being the lightest mclaren ever made how did you decide how much power to give the car <laughs> all of it all of it that's the answer <laughs> so yeah all of it i mean there is there is obviously a, a limit and and in terms of what you you can do um and also how much and, and where the car's designed for it's not designed even though it's got this this um partnership with the original elva let's say it's um really designed as a, a road car still fantastic on the track but it's designed excuse me primarily as a road car and so the power it's um i don't know how they actually come to that decision that falls outside of my 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 control my domain let's say um but 800 new meters of torque and i think it was it landed 820 25 ps of power um in a car that's lighter than a center and it's got more power it's, it's enough because um the center was 1198 kilos and obviously without the glass house we've never disclosed the number for this so i'm going to be careful but um it's considerably lighter and um the power to weight ratio clearly is through the roof you guys haven't released the official weight of this car have you no no is that coming anytime soon um not that i've been told so i have to stay tight-lipped <laughs> no worries all right all right let me go out in here let me have a seat here real quick we'll, um, <clears throat> and let me see what else uh a bunch of other questions here um well that would what's it says what spec would you do yourself we talked about that mm -hmm. um you, you actually yeah you know it can be opted with a windscreen which I personally think is a crime, but um, but I, I I do think you guys it was a from what I've seen I still haven't seen the final final one, but it it does seem to be a very elegant solution, um, yeah. and actually it really cleans up if you if you don't like this this is kind of some people absolutely love this feature, um, the, you know the 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 intake, mm. yeah. um, but that yeah. obviously goes away because you no longer need it so it actually makes yeah. you almost kind of swap out. Um, another cleaner feature you know for you know for mm -hmm. it but um are there any yeah. other changes with with the with, with opting the windscreen no i mean clearly you the the duct feeds the the, the intake yeah. underneath the nose there you don't need to take the air in through 
and fire the air out of this feature and over your head. So you you still get an incredibly deep front splitter. You don't actually see where we blank it. Um, and then, you, as you say, Paris, uh, you remove this feature from the hood and then you take the windscreen, which we're so, so near now. We're just weeks away from doing the final release on the windscreen. And uh, yeah. basically, it's, it, it's done. And we just fine-tuning uh, the details, such as visors, etc. But it is really well integrated. It does look good. But for me, I'm, I have a similar view to you. This car was was designed in its purest state about being exposed to the elements. Um, so I'm a fan of that version, of course. But, um, I, you know, at the end yeah. of the day, each to their own. Each to their own. Yeah. Just thought I'd show the interior mm -hmm. a bit more. These seats are amazing, by the way. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you don't really get that with, I mean, you know, with a lot of other car brands, um, they really kind of take a very generic approach and will just take them out of an existing car. And, you know, like, like again, you know, no, no offense to Ferrari, but, you know, the, there's a lot that's, you know, on the Monza that's from the 812. Um, yeah. You guys really made this cabin its own. Like, that's a yeah. lot of work. Like this, I mean, you know, this isn't, present on any of your other cars i mean no, this whole it. like you mentioned the what do we call it again the ip or the yeah so i would call it the binnacle so the the, the yeah. cluster the instrument pack that's uh column mounted which is a real i mean engineering wise that is incredibly challenging because you have to stop any vibration yeah. so the the development of the the column has been intense and we started this a long time ago so we actually right from the off it was like one of the um the strategic things we wanted to introduce to make sure we keep the instrumentation always mounted on the column um, obviously you've got the new driver display there as well with the home button on the side so it's really ergonomically it's really easy to use because it's on the side of the the uh, screen so it's just everything falls to hand incredibly well the ergonomics which were already like famous for having the best ergonomics have improved further very simple just give just give the people the information that they need don't overcomplicate it keep the steering wheel nice and clean paddles exactly where you need them um extended paddles as well so you can always find the gears it's just about fun engagement um yeah and in the integration i had to declutter it another car that really inspired me actually when we sat down to do this was the uh, the 550 spider porsche yeah, the the, you, the, I, I absolutely love that car, and this has um, a feeling of it when you sat inside it. It has a, a similar feeling, which is um, just exciting. Just when you sit in it alone, and just as a clay model, people would sit in it and they'd be grinning from ear to ear because it's just so dramatic. Those front fenders, it's just um, it's something else. It really is. All right, I'm gonna get inside of it, which I did. Yeah. So. Wow, sorry, there's a bright light directly in my yeah, eye. You're but like a ghost. <laughs> I know. Well, it's all right. Um, behind me, what I'm looking at, this uh, this mesh mm -hmm. grill. Are those speakers? Yes, yes those Amazing. speakers. I, 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 I mentioned it earlier, but you, obviously it's quite hard to, um, when we're looking at the whole car, it's quite hard to focus on those details. So we've got the mesh speakers there behind you, and they're angled really well, to, like the Zenith, to basically the the perfect position for the sound, the trajectory of the sound right towards the ears. Um, so you, you get a very, very good sound quality, really v right up to high speeds. Um, so we've put a lot of effort into that to really make sure we, it still is fun. Again, it's all part of this experience. You're cruising along, you want the music playing, you want to enjoy it. Um, that area that we have developed a touch further, the, the, the mesh pattern itself now looks even better. Um, we use some fancy software called Grasshopper, which allows us to um, go from like large, a large pattern and it fades out into a small pattern. So it gives like movement and dynamic. Like, everything should look as if it's moving fast. And, um, and that's one of the examples where we've taken it to another level since, since this. So cool. Yeah, very integrated, very clean. Really, really clean. Yeah. I'm trying to focus. Oh, see that handle right there below the air conditioning uh, vent? Is yeah. just an access panel? It's a little um, storage area. So you can use you, your phone, sunglasses. It actually goes, if, if the uh, panel looks like this wide, coming mm -hmm. rearwards, you actually can put your hand in and you can reach inside. So it's um, 
longer than it looks. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so it doesn't open on the model, but um, obviously in the real yeah. thing. Tried so you put too. your phone in, sunglasses, etc. Yeah. Let's Excuse see me. How, see how good I can get this moving it around. Actually, you know, I'm going to try and use a reflection to actually see. Uh, I don't know if it'll do it well enough. Just trying to get an idea so I can see what it looks like. Yeah, that's it. And you start to see those fenders sweeping down. I, I, yeah. So it's funny on the show car. I don't know if it can, it, there's so much reflection, but um, I've noticed that, uh, you know, they, they've, they've inserted some, some graphics. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I can do it in there, you can see, right? So yeah. somebody chose a song. It's a mezzanine. <laughs> yeah. By massive attack. Yeah. Which I actually, wasn't, I actually really wasn't like me, but I love it. It's a good, great yeah, yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I like yeah. massive attack and that's why I thought it was yeah. interesting. Somebody, you know, I, I love that whoever it was. Uh, you know what it made me think of? It made me think of uh, "Don't Forget the Modelers." You know, the uh, hashtag yeah, yeah. That always gets thrown yeah, around yeah. on all the McLaren yeah. stuff. Right. Um, and yeah, I wondered yeah. if one of those guys had slipped it in. You know, he might have. Um, I'm trying to think. It even, it even has the plaque right here. It says McLaren yeah. Elvis Show Car. And another thing we've introduced as well. We, we're doing. Um, you can get um, like we, uh, especially weave carbon, where we can weave in graphics. We can weave in your name. We can weave in logos. So the, the carbon technology we introduced on Speedtail, which enables that, we're now bringing through into Elva as well. So it's, it, yeah, and again, actually, you I have so much say, fun with this stuff. And that's what I was going to say. I thought that was really a nice touch. Is um, you can see all throughout the car, and even on you know on on the front, like the splitter and the mm -hmm. diffuser, um, the one K carbon, you know, which I mm -hmm. thought was great. That carried over from the Speedtail, and then same thing with the materials. You know, these seats. You know, you've got what we're all accustomed to in most cars, this this semi aniline which is beautiful. Yeah. You've got that nice, like, clean, smooth look. But I love this new buck. You know, it, yeah. I think it's funny because I, um, you know, I, I wish people could could obviously, you know, the, you know, touch it and feel it. But it's actually not a suede and it's not Alcantara. It's it's um, it feels great. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's velvet. almost like this 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 brushed leather hide that's just yeah. has the finest amount of um of texture. But you can just see, you know, one of those things over time, you know, you, when you're hopping in and out of a car, you know, it mm -hmm. it it you you know starts to look a bit damaged. But you can see yeah. that this will patina extremely yes. well. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it's almost like when you look at older cars and 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 you know, when you go to a concourse and they say things like, um, well, it's all original. We've, we've never restored it. And you look at the leather and you go, well, that, that doesn't actually look that bad. Like you can mm. tell that it's old, yeah. but you go to touch it and it's not like it's like brittle and crumbling apart. Yeah. And it just goes to show you like the quality of the hide, yeah. you know, that they used yeah. to use back then and why things patinaed really well. And you can tell that this thing was really, I mean, it can handle, I don't want to say the elements. I mean, you don't want to be in your kind of weather, yeah, but no. like, you know, a little... <laughs> <laughs> little mist, little right. fog, little whatever, you know, yeah. but the, the, it, it's, it's, it's phenomenal, you know, and, and again, the idea of bringing in, I mean, it's, God, I, I wish I had more light to show, but I mean, the fact that the, the painted surface is all on the inside, and yeah. it, it's just like, one, it brings great opportunity to like clear bra the inside, so it's even more protected, but um, it's, yeah, it's, um. And you can you can spec you know as you look at the inside of the door there where it wraps down you've got that extended yes. body color you can also yeah. go for um, visual carbon fiber so once you wrap over the doors you can then change it, yeah change it to a visual carbon so you can really you can create a dark bathtub that you sit in or you can keep a full body, body color bathtub yeah um, the seats as you say yeah patina again is a key part of it when when I mean like I can say I'm, I'm into sort of classic cars and stuff and I think. You're looking at the 550 Porsche, Maserati Birdcage, um, and those cars, the, the materials, as you say, were a key part of adding the character. And it's like your favorite pair of slippers, your favorite pair, I don't know, you, 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 add, you add soul, it adds character. It totally um, does. We have also some modern materials as options as well. Um, they have, is it super fabric and uh, ultra fabric, ultra fabric, sorry. And that again feels almost like like velvet. It's like leather meets velvet, but it's um, really high tech material, easy to keep clean, easy to wash down. So we really tried to cover off 
the things that we thought the customers would be looking for and uh, so to give a good set of options depending on how they they wish to use the car and also how they how they want it to patina as well yeah i'm, I'm hopping out <laughs> and yep. the uh <laughs> skylights you know you can hop out with an ipad in your hand that's pretty uh yeah pretty good <laughs> show it again you know the fact that you guys retain the doors you know the Daigo is, is really cool, you know, because again, on the Aston and on the Ferrari, again, nothing, it's a conventional door, you yeah. know. It, it just makes you smile again, doesn't it? It's just a bit of fun, buoyance, it's fun, but also it, it really does make the car easier to step in and out of. And, and at, at a normal dihedral angle, we've slightly made it tighter to the body this time. And also, clearly, as you could see, the doors are, they don't drop all the way down through the full depth of the body. They're like essentially like a half door, so you have to step over. Um, so it means you can, you know, I, not that you're going to be parking this car in a, a tight space, so it's not a problem, but it meant we could keep the doors lighter. The doors are smaller, therefore, the hinges are lighter, therefore, we could take more weight out of the car. That's the reason for that decision. And it also then meant the um, we could create some space above the rocker where you have that interior compartment that we spoke about when you were sat in the yeah. car. So multiple benefits. So every decision we take is about how do we save weight? How do we add storage on an open car? So one problem presents other opportunities and we solve it in, in what we think um, delivers the best car for the customer. And the wheels, I love the wheels. I mean, it's super Such aggressive. Such a cool design. Yeah, it's, I see the uh, funny, I haven't, I haven't given much love to the wheels. Let's, let's, uh, let's do that. Yeah, I absolutely love these things. They look so I mean, delicate. The, I mean, it would, it's really calm. I mean, to look at it from, from head on, you know, it's one thing. But as you start to move it around yeah. and you see the, the depth and how concave it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like loads of shape. It's um, like, I mean, the, the whole graphic on the side is very aggressive. It's almost like a scythe. It has this feeling of movement. Yeah. Uh, and a good wheel should always feel as though it's got some movement, I think. That's why we tend to choose five, seven, seven nine spoke like odd numbers for the number of spokes because it always feels unbalanced feels as though it's rotating um yeah and i think the the very sort of intricate design as you get close to it it's actually very sophisticated um it's like a five spoke design with this sort of split spoke um towards the rim which is uh very elegant but it adds um yeah great movement and it looks very light as well as, as well as being very light in its design I thought this was nice. I hadn't seen this before. The, um, the, the, the treatment on the mirror. Let's see if I can get it properly. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. And again, it's just about trying to everything. Everything's an opportunity to like carve volume out to carve the visual volume away and potentially you know, just improving the aero. Everything adds a half a percent here and there. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's amazing really when you when you get to do these these calls and go around a car like this with some because for me you know we were working on this about started probably three years ago three and a half years ago yeah and it's and you're going through all those questions and challenges and eventually you see the car going out into public and yeah all these stories are coming back to you and yeah it's uh, it's amazing I'm very lucky very lucky to do what we do and what is the little black kind of oval that's on the the, the, the cluster uh, that's um the light sensor so that's for um like brightness under instrumentation so cool <laughs> yeah a lot so of work cool. from a lot of people blood sweat and tears oh, and these yeah. things yeah 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 well we have uh we have reached our hour and um no well, you know what okay I, again I, I wasn't doing my job um so actually i think i can a answer this one it's one of the few things i can answer it says um will the pricing be similar to the senna or to the the 720 and the answer is uh the senna um it is a limited production car it is an ultimate series car much like the p1 uh in the senna and much like what rob said mm -hmm. it actually it really does it completes the family of cars um mm -hmm. uh you really could justify owning all of them it actually that's that's kind of you know i mentioned that you want to collect them all that's kind of what you do want to collect is all of them um because they really do offer a completely different driving experience 
So, um, you know, new yeah. two are alike. Um, and so, yeah, but anyway, the, the pricing is more in line with the center. Um, and, uh, you know, real quick, do you have your phone near you? Yeah. Okay. It yeah. says, tell Rob to check his, uh, his DM for the photo. Him. Oh, no, so, you, you just broke up. So I'm I not sure see, what that I think said. I know the picture. Oh, you could hear me? Check in. Um, I can hear you now. But on, check, on I, I missed where to check on Instagram. Oh, oh okay. um, check your direct messages. I think um, I, I think our photographer, Robert Grubb, sent you something. I haven't got anything yet. I think my um, my internet, as you know, Paris, as we were trying to warm up for this, I warm up. There's, not, there's nothing lo loading up yet. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. <laughs> No big deal. Like, also, oh. you know, your 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 iPad's taking up a lot of it. No, it's the same thing with me. My my connection's the same way. Yeah. So, well, I will check way, it. I will check be out on, though and be write the, back. Be on the lookout for it. Yeah. Um, we'll but no, Rob, thank you so much. I know I've I've taken another one of your your Saturdays, um, but uh, I, I I promise not to uh, abuse the privilege. <laughs> um, but thank you so much. It, you know, You're we're very fortunate to have this car here. Um, very fortunate to have you walk us through it. Like I said. I, I tried to retain a lot of the stuff that we talked about uh, regarding Elva in our last talk. And, um, and so it's great to have been able to kind of dive into it even more with the car here. Cause I, I, yeah. everything you said stuck with me. So, you know, in between presentations, I've been staring at all the things that you'd mentioned and now, now it gives me even more. So, um, and I have a bunch of presentations to do today, so I'm going to take everything that you've said <laughs> and, uh, use it as my own. So, um, but no, cool. thank, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, again, can't wait to, can't wait to have you over here because the yeah. weather's amazing. This is, this is actually where this car was designed for. I mean, to be exactly. fair, this is, um, you know, if Ferrari hadn't taken it, you could have called it the California. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. The Beatles. Yeah. No, always good to see you, Paris. And I really, really appreciate it. Always a pleasure doing this and, um, yeah, take care. And if you need, if you need to do it again, more than happy. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join us on, on, on your Saturday. And, um, and again, if there's anything that I missed, you know, at the end of this, send a comment, a message. Um, and I will, I will try and get the picture that I was showing uh, to everyone so that they have them. And uh, that's it. And I'll keep checking my phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep, I, I, I know. What he, I, now that, I, now that um, I, I thought about it, I know exactly what he sent you. I think you'll really appreciate it. So. Definitely check it out. Will do. So. All right. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. I'll see you. Thanks, see you Rob. Thank Thanks you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.